All right, so I had previously shot this video and um, didn't realize that it wasn't capturing my audio. Audio capture was turned on, my microphone was turned on, but every time I restart my computer for some reason, it resets to default mic instead of my microphone. So I'm adding bricks. This is how you can make an object uh, move up a little bit or rotate or whatever with a brick. This is rotating 0.1 units every frame. Fast forward a little bit and we've rotated when we hit spacebar. Fast forward a little bit here. So if we press the keyboard W and the property up down is less than 100 it'll set the property to 1 but we want to add one. There we go. So now that's limited to how far it'll go up, but it doesn't come back down on its own. So we go ahead and we add the logic. So if up down is greater than zero and keyboard W is not pressed, go back down. So go up if W is pressed and add one. If W is not pressed and up down is greater than zero, add negative one until it's zero. So that's the logic to go up and back down using a keyboard key. So we add in the logic to go down pressing a keyboard key that's limited to negative 100 on this up down integer thing. So we go down, we can go up by pressing W and then down by pressing S and it returns back to where it's supposed to be. So we start creating a uh, Python script here. So own is the block that's calling the Python script. So in this instance it'd be cubed as the owner. So that's its point in space. And then world orientation dot call is like own world orientation dot call zero is the x axis, one is the y axis, and two is the z axis. So you could do negative zero and it'd be negative x. So it's saying five units out on x is where this is. So we set this up to draw a line. BGE.render.drawline draws a line in space, but it draws it right over everything. So it's not particularly useful in game, it's more of a debug tool. So. So we're drawing a line relative to the thing. Now we'll get a point in space relative to the object using world transform matrix instead of the world position plus the orientation. So that's out five units ahead of it, left and right zero units, and then up two units. Since we're calling vector we're going to need to import it from MathUtils import vector. So now instead of being directly out the axis, we go out the axis 5 and up 2 for the end point. And then in 1 unit for the start point. There it is. 
so it's points relative to the object in space but not using a column of the axis but using a uh, vector offset so we can use the same kind of math to fake parent an object so this cube we're gonna name him Bob Bob is our cube so if Bob not in own, that's saying if we don't have Bob, store Bob. Own.scene.objects, that'll grab him from the scene. So that would be enough to get his name, but we need more information. We need his initial offset. So we make this a list instead of a single property. All right, so we need to get his local position relative to us. So own world transform dot inverted is what gets you the local. But I forgot to do um, after inverted. You're supposed to have parenthesis and parenthesis. I spelled position wrong there. So we get the rotational difference between the two objects here. So we're saying if Bob's already stored, then we do this. So Bob zero is the object. Bob1 is his local position. So this should work, but it's going to throw an error because I forgot to put that parenthesis in there. I figure it out real quick. Like, oh, this one's good. What's going on there? Like, hmm, let me check the other one. Oh, I messed up. There we go, I fixed it. So that's what was missing. So now it's fixed in space. It's like parenting, but it's only the position. We're not doing the rotation here. So to show that off, I go ahead and add a brick. So this is like vertex parent. Where we're parenting it to a point in space, we're not parenting it to a rotation. See? It's handy for certain things too, like having the camera follow a guy around or whatever, but not relative to the guy exactly. Like you can offset where the camera center is. And then this last bit is how to make it so that it rotates and stays in sync. So that's like almost exactly like true parenting. But it has physics and all that good stuff still. So it's like a constraint we made in Python. And it works when you go up and down and all that good stuff too. So next... Um, I think that we explain how to make a raycast instead of a draw line using the same stuff. And right now my computer was chugging a little bit, but um, I'm in eco mode and I'm recording. So eventually it starts to like slow down a little bit because it gets warm. If I put it in normal mode and then do boost on the fan, it's, it's quite fast. And then I uh, put this math here to make it so that it moves up and down in the spot, but I added a timer property to the object that's a timer, set it to debug, and then I noticed that I was going to add this to the world orientation instead of the position, and that wouldn't have worked. So I'm like, oh yeah, duh.
it goes here. There we go. So now, rather than just sitting at that point in space relative to it like parent, it moves up and down in a sine wave with time. And it's not very apparent. It's hard to see with it moving around in circles like this. So I make it move a little faster. Pi times faster. So that's 3.14 times as fast. And you can see it moving up and down pretty good in this time now. But if I stop the rotation, it makes it a lot easier. So I stop the rotation here real quick. So there it is. Move it up and down using sign. Looks good for like a little fairy or whatever following you around behind you or whatever. And that point is relative to me no matter where I am or how I'm facing. So if I turn up upside down, my up down is the sine waves up down still too. Because we're using the orientation matrix for that. So now we build a ray cast instead of a draw line from using the same two points. So zero is how far past n to go. Those two parentheses is what property you look for. It's every property if you do that. That's the normals in world space or local space, I think. That's x-ray and polyproxy. So if ray zero means did we hit anybody? So we cut this part out. If we hit somebody, draw this kind of line. If we don't, draw this kind of line. So ray 1 is the end point of the ray. So that's the hit point. So if it hits something, draw a line to the hit point. Else, draw a line to the end. And then we'll have it be green or red. I'm add a mesh, grab it out there, throw it out there, move it up. And then I ray cast. I'm like, why doesn't it hit it? But I ray cast it from inside of the object out, and I didn't hit it. So I'm like, why is it still green? I move it up a little bit. I try and move up to make it ray cast hit it, but it doesn't work. Something about the way I'm ray casting is just not detecting it. I'm like, hmm. So I set the physics shape of the box to make sure it's a cube. Apply all transforms, I'm like, oh yeah, duh. That's going to move its origin to the center of the screen, so I set the origin to geometry. So the ray thing's still not working, so I'm like, hmm, I'm doing something wrong here. I'm ray casting in from the center of the ray out of the box. I mean, from the center of the box out, and that doesn't really work. So I change where the start and end are here real quick. So start at me and go past the box. And it works. So there's how to ray cast from points relative to an object in space or a bone in space even. You can replace own world transform with a bone matrix. So bone armature transform times matrix times vector will give you a point in space relative to a bone. So yeah, you can do just about anything with this. Um, if you have any questions or anything, please uh, leave them in the comments. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And then also, um, I'll leave a link to this file in my uh, description. Thanks.